words of joy and hope. First Sunday of Advent, Year B, Gospel according to Mark, chapter 13, verses 33 to 37. Commentary of Father Fernando Armelini. A good Sunday to everyone. We start Advent today, a word that we know come from the Latin word Adventus, indicating the arrival of an official or the visit of a king or an emperor to a province. And we use this same term to refer to the fact that marked the history of our world, the arrival of the Son of God, who became one of us. In these four weeks of preparation for Christmas, without a doubt, we will look back to the past. We will remember the birth of Jesus of Nazareth. But then our gaze will focus on the present and we will wonder what this coming means today. What do we expect? We certainly cannot say that all the reality of the world, of our personal life, has been marked by this coming. Even in the heart of the greatest saint, there are dark corners that have not yet been fully visited by the light of the gospel. It is necessary to wait for the coming of Christ in the heart of each one of us and in our world. I believe that all people await the arrival of something, a change. The culture that is widespread in our world educates for certain expectations. In fact, exalts wealth, power, idolizes the pursuit of pleasure. It is not oriented so much towards spiritual things that they are somewhat relegated to the personal realm. Today's world also expects a coming, that of science and technology. Because of science and technology, we await answers to the concrete needs of life that are the ones that matter. We Christians also wait for Him to come, but we do not idolize science and technology because they are not the ones that will give the answers to the Christians about the ultimate meaning of our existence. And it is up to them to decide the moral options. There are some questions and anxieties that only the gospel can answer. And for these, we have to wait. The first step to take to prepare for the coming of the Lord, to allow Him to enter our world and our lives, is to become aware of the darkness that surrounds us and the need to let the light of Christ and His gospel I will try to mention some of these nights. I will mention the night because in today's Gospel, Jesus will speak to us of His coming at night and of the need to be awake, to watch, because it is in these nights that the Lord wants to enter to make us happy. I will mention a few nights, but then each of us will reflect on the experience of the night in his or her personal life. Let us think about the sad night of those who are restless because they had a sloppy life made of compromises. They cannot be happy. They hope for a future that changes their lives that illuminates that night. Then, the night of those who seek joy in debauchery, in drugs, and then they find themselves increasingly unhappy. The night of those who have made mistakes and are locked out of remorse, they no longer experience joy. 
they need a coming of the light of Christ. The night of those who are enslaved by hatred, by grudges that do not give them peace, but from which they cannot free themselves. The night of someone who leads a double life and are then slaves to blackmail, they are not living. The night of those who feel betrayed in their affections, the lonely night of those who feel forgotten in the years when their life is declining, the night of those who no longer find meaning, a reason to continue living, the night of pain. The darkest night of all is the night of the grave. For those who have returned from the darkness of these nights, it is useless to await the arrival of science and technology. It is not the psychiatric drugs that light up these nights. There is a need to wait and prepare so that the light of Christ can come to shine. But it is not just the nights of our personal history, it is the night of the world that we know is wrapped in dense darkness of wars, violence, injustices. On these nights, we hear the cry of the poor, the cry of the sick, of those who suffer violence. And there is also another night that worries us a lot. It is the night that also envelops the church, our Christian community, where there are inconsistencies with the gospel that we preach, the night of scandals that disturb the consciences of believers, and they offer anti-clericals a reason to justify their choices and also their resentments. Then there are also divisions within the community. How many nights have we experienced? Those who have become aware of these nights await a coming and raise a sincere invocation to the Lord. We find it in the book of Revelation and it is the last verse of this book. Come Lord Jesus, come with your word with your gospel to illuminate this world of ours and this life of mine. The gospel passage that is proposed to us today is the last part of a long discourse that Jesus makes, a difficult speech because he uses apocalyptic languages. Jesus is on the Mount of Olives with four of his disciples. The first one he called Peter, Andrew, James and John. They are contemplating the temple and Jesus announces the destruction. No stone will remain on stone. The context, therefore, of the gospel passage that we will hear today is the darkness that surrounds the people of Israel who have rejected the light of Christ and are going to find their own ruin. Jerusalem did not stay awake, did not know how to wait for the coming of the Lord, and did not accept his salvation. In this context of the dark night, Jesus tells us to remain alert, to capture the moment when he comes with his light. Let us listen to the recommendation that he makes us. Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. The entire gospel passage that we will hear today echoes an almost obsessive call from Jesus. Be watchful, stay awake, keep your eyes wide open. We know that at certain times, the eyelids close and we really struggle not to fall asleep. And what happens in the physical field also happens in the spiritual field. 
And Jesus is very concerned because there are dangers to avoid. And there are opportunities that should not be missed because they might not happen again. Jesus has already warned his disciples about the dangers. He told them, keep your eyes open. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. What is this yeast about? It indicated something impure. And Jesus is concerned that impurities will enter his message, corrupt and ruin it. The leaven of the Pharisees was the image of the God, the legislature, the judge. If this self-righteous image of God enters, it contaminates the revelation of the face of God that Jesus gave us. Herod's East concerns the moral life, the lust for power, debauchery. This must not enter the life of the disciple of Christ. Regarding these dangers, he already mentioned it at the beginning of the chapter from which the passage is taken on which we meditate today. Jesus said, Be careful that no one leads you astray. He was referring to those false messiahs who present themselves as models of successful life, but successful according to the beatitudes of this world, not according to Jesus. Jesus says, Watch, do not be seduced by these stars that are admired by all. They are passing stars. If you don't stay awake, if you fall asleep, there are problems. When you sleep, it is not that you do nothing. You dream and lose control, contact with reality. And when you wake up, it may be late. Life may be over. The dice are played. Therefore, stay awake. In our passage, however, the recommendation regarding vigilance does not refer to a danger that was looming like the yeast of the Pharisees, which we must avoid. This is a favorable moment, an opportunity not to be missed. The term Jesus uses, in fact, is the moment of awakening. When you stay awake, the Greek term used is kairos. What was kairos? Kairos was a Greek god who was characterized by the fact that he was bald. He only had a lock of hair on his forehead. The god that had to be caught, indicating an opportunity not to be missed. At the entrance of the Olympia Stadium, there was an altar to the, the god Kairos because before the competition, the athletes went to offer sacrifices because they wanted to seize the occasion of their life, the, an Olympic victory, which meant perennial glory. What a favorable moment is Jesus referring to? Stay tuned. Don't miss it. He says it with an allegory that we will have to be careful because it is not a parable. In the allegory, each character, each detail has its meaning. Let us listen. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Who are the characters in the allegory? The man who left is clearly Jesus. But let us be careful. He has not moved away, leaving us here alone to return at a time that nobody knows. No, he is with us, but only the way of being present has changed. Before he was subject to the limits of our human condition. When he was in Capernaum, he could not be in Nazareth. By location was impossible even for him. If he was sick or tired, he couldn't be in a synagogue preaching. 
these are the limits of our human condition that now are no longer for him because he has entered the glory of his father. Let us pay attention. He said it clearly, I am with you always until the end of the world. Therefore, we do not wait for his return. He is with us, but he has not yet fully entered our lives. And we must not miss the opportunity when it is presented to let in his gospel and his light. The house that he visibly materially left is the community of disciples with whom he lived. The servants to whom he left the task of carrying out his work. How beautiful are we, those of us who have adhered to his life proposal and those who have agreed to make ourselves available to this project of the new world, of the kingdom of God. And each of us has been entrusted with a task to perform according to our capabilities. But we are servants, that is, we have put all our disposition to create this new world. If one truly believes in the cause of the kingdom of God and in the gospel, it's not content with a personal and intimate adhesion. No, he or she is inserted into the life of the community and she makes herself available to give her contribution to the cause of the kingdom of God, of the gospel. The gatekeeper. It is another recommendation that is made directly to the gatekeeper who must monitor. We know that the gatekeepers can let in or close the door to those who do not show up. As a decent person, the gatekeeper is the conscience of each one. It is in charge to watch because there will be many who will present themselves as someone who wants to do you favors, who make charming proposals, but to seduce you. If this gatekeeper lets himself be bribed, then it is over. He must know how to distinguish between Jesus, the one who wants to enter your life, and the thieves and robbers. We know how many proposals the saviors of today make. Be careful, says Jesus, because it is easy for the gatekeeper to be seduced and he could no longer distinguish when the shepherd comes or when the assailants come, we must watch because the master comes in at the unexpected moment. Here is the kairos, the opportunity, the opportunity not to be missed. Let us listen. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. Many times we have heard the expression, the Lord Jesus has gone, but one day he will return. Let us avoid this expression because it is wrong. The translation of our text is correct. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming. In the New Testament, the word to return, referring to Jesus, is never used. Always the verb used is which means he comes. He cannot return because he never left. He left our condition here in this world, but is still present as the reason. The, if the translation says return, it is a very serious error because it gave rise to the traditional interpretation that says that God is coming at the end of our life to ask for an account of what we have done, and it can also come suddenly. 
If you are caught off guard, you could face a very severe punishment. Interpreted in this way, the recommendation of Jesus to watch saddens us, makes us bitter, does not arouse joy, and it is certainly not a beautiful way to prepare for the joy of Christmas. Jesus is speaking of the present moment when he comes to lighten our nights to bring us joy. When you have moved away from the Lord, you are not happy, you are sad. Sin can give you pleasure, but not joy. Then one day, you hear the gospel words that remind you that the Heavenly Father loves you madly, just as you are. What does the gatekeeper tell you? Open wide the door of your heart because it is he who speaks to you. It is he who wants to enter the night of your life, created by sin and wants to bring you joy and peace. Or when you have lost your mind because of money you have accumulated, perhaps without any ethics, and you also plan to make it grow, then one day you hear the voice of the brother in need asking you for help. It is the voice of the Lord. It is He who wants to liberate you, who wants to save your life from attachment to material goods. Let Him enter the night of your heart, now, not at the end of your life, when all your goods will be impounded in customs. Now those, those goods must be used to build love, to help your brother, your sister. When your heart is deranged with passion and a brother approaches you and says lovingly, do not ruin your family, he is an angel of the Lord. He is Christ who is speaking to you through him and wants to enter the night of the utmost darkness of your feelings. The gatekeeper tells you, let him in. It is the moment not to be missed, otherwise you will ruin your life. Or when you are in mourning and perhaps you have lost the one that the prophet Ezekiel calls with a wonderful image. You have lost the joy in your eyes, your wife. That's the darkest night and a brother of faith draws near and he does not repeat the same old phrase to you, courage, life goes on. No, he tells you, open your eyes and wide in the light of Easter. You will feel the joy of your eyes always by your side, like the risen Christ. That is Jesus who wants to enter the night of your heart. This is the reason why Jesus insists on the need to watch, to capture those moments when he enters our lives. And let us notice when he comes when it is dark and indeed Jesus dwells in the four divisions of the night, of the Greco-Roman world. He can come in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning and make sure that when he arrives you are not asleep and do not receive him. You lose the opportunity. It may be the case that this waiting is prolonged and the danger of closing your eyes, falling asleep, to be unprepared when the greater the need is. Therefore, the importance of the gatekeeper the conscience must be attentive to recognize the Lord, recognize His voice that is different from the multiple proposals, a conscience that must be continuously awake and attentive because it is easy for this guardian to fall asleep, to get drugged by the dominant thinking of current morals and then if the gatekeeper is stunned, drowsy, he no longer understands anything. He cannot recognize the voice of the Lord. The most urgent recommendation of Jesus 
is precisely for the gatekeeper because of the danger of falling asleep. The dream of reason always lurks. And the, before ending the discourse, Jesus recommends once again, what I say to you, the twelve, I say to all, watch. And these, these all are us. The sincere recommendation is directed to us today. I wish you all a blessed Sunday and a good preparation for the coming of the Lord.